Hi and welcome. It's Pat Duckworth, the author of Hot Women Rock, How to Discover Your Midlife Entrepreneurial Mojo. And I am so proud to say that my guest this evening is a dear friend. She's a catastrophic stroke survivor, an inspirational keynote speaker, a university lecturer and the CEO of The Heart of Living Vibrantly, the Center for Mindfulness and Self-Mastery. She uses the principles in her number one of Amazon bestseller, Living Happy to Be Me, to guide teens and adults, executives and entrepreneurs to happiness, success and fulfillment. She's been featured on the cover of IDIS magazine, published in 1111 magazine, and is a featured luminary on inspiremetoday.com, as well as the recipient of numerous awards for leadership and success. So please join me in welcoming the lovely Valerie Shepherd. Hello, Valerie. How are you this evening? I am fantastic. And thank you so much to the lovely Pat Duckworth. <laughs> I'm really excited to be with you. So, Valerie, I just want to find out all about how you developed into all the wonderful things that you're doing now. So how did you start out? What did you do? Did you go to college and then develop from there? I did. Uh, I have both an undergraduate degree in communications and a master's in marketing and logistics and uh, an MBA. And uh, I'm the daughter of Marine, some little highlights. So I've lived in a number of states in the US, 10 states, moved like 27 times. Wow. I call Virginia home. And uh, I went to uh, undergrad in Virginia and grad school in upstate New York. I have a court of a hybrid corporate marketing background that includes some nonprofit development work and also working for big fortune uh, 500 companies like Procter and Gamble, and I was a vice president of marketing at ConAgra Foods. So, what is and, it you liked about? What did you like about marketing? What drew you into that? You know, when I first started doing marketing, I didn't even know that was what I was doing. <laughs> I was doing um, fundraising for lots of um, moderate and liberal and progressive organizations in living in, in right around Washington, D.C. And it wasn't until I went to graduate school that um, people said, well, you know, you've been doing marketing for 12 years. And I was like, oh, that's cool. <laughs> and it was through my MBA that I really understood the discipline of marketing. And of course, I loved it. I loved um, the art of it, the creative uh, picking visuals to go with the words and creating a moment that helps people really get into what it is you're wanting to uh, have them experience or the, the change you'd like to make or, but, and, and I also love the science of it. I'm really into the data and understanding, you know, why people do what they do, what makes them tick, what is their psychographic profile in addition to their demographic profile. So all those things, and I, I mean, now I, I teach marketing at the uh, University of California, Irvine, in the Paul Mirage School of Business. So uh, I'm still in it. <laughs> so is that where you went after you'd had this career in corporate or was there another stage in between? Yes, I, uh, my career in corporate ended. I, I, I introduced myself at that time as a recovering corporate executive on radical sabbatical. <laughs> and I'm happy to say my sabbatical continues, although I could see myself going back to corporate in certain, um, in certain roles, not as a VP of marketing, but I could see me doing what I'm doing now. And uh, I left corporate America when the company moved from California back into the Midwest and I didn't want to go. And so I stayed here and I started teaching at the University of California. Then I, I still teach part-time there as a lecturer. And uh, that's what, that also began my entrepreneurial adventure, which I'm still on today as well. So tell us about that. What, what are you, where are you now with that adventure? Well, it's been uh, quite a ride. And it started, um, I had a history of event planning and started with event planning and I was doing some acting and all this stuff uh, back at 
in uh, 2007, 2008, when I first left my corporate job. And then as I went on this journey to understand a lot more about what was going on in my life that had me successful but unfulfilled, mm. um, had lots of the trappings of what people encouraged me and promised me would bring me happiness, and they really didn't. Mm. Um, and so when I, as I was going through that journey, I became really interested in things like human dynamics and um, even deeper into uh, communication and, and especially into nonviolent communication. And um, I had always been spiritual, but I went even deeper into kind of metaphysics and universal consciousness and things like that. And from that, I started teaching the tools and from that, my book, and it all just got deeper and higher and deeper and and I'm still doing those things. So, and, and we, you just vaguely touched on that you've done some acting, and I know you've got some comedy skills as well. <laughs> Can we talk about that? <laughs> sure. So, uh, I do improvisational comedy. I'm on a leave of absence right now uh, because of the stroke, but um, I've been, I had been doing improvisational comedy for about five years, performing professionally with a troupe here in Orange County, California called Improv City. Multi-award winning troupe, really popular and very successful group of um, uh, comedians, improvisers. And uh, I originally took it up, Pat, because of my other acting stuff. I just wanted to be, think better on my feet and be more spontaneous and learn how to accept my own failures. I mean, improv is great for failing big. <laughs> and uh, it really did all those things. But then the other thing that happened was I fell in love with it. Um, I'm not anywhere near as good and accomplished as some of the people I played with. I mean, they are really amazing. Um, and I really had a great time doing it. And I love bringing it into my work. Um, laughter and comedy are phenomenal transformational tools. I love it. I, you know, I just enjoy laughing you know, if, if I can bring some fun as a, as a therapist, people don't come to me because they're laughing too much. Right. And if I can send them back out the door with a smile on their face, as far as I'm concerned, whatever the problem was, we're a long way towards solving it. So, yeah, the more we can bring the laughter in, the better life will be, I think. So the work that you're doing with the students at the moment, how is that developing? What, what are you teaching them? Uh, mm, this is my, this is what I was born for. This is what I'm on the planet for. It's so wonderful. And it doesn't matter when you figure it out or when you jump into it and make this really the centerpiece, just do it. And um, I love it. So I teach a couple of uh, classes based on my book. Um, one is called Living 101, Being Happy and Whole. And the other is called Happy and Whole Practicum. And one of them is a, an, a kind of an entry level course and the practicum is an advanced class. And it's all about how to master yourself in your life so that you can master whatever your life throws your way. Mm. And we talk about self-love, self-awareness, self-acceptance. We do um, role plays and uh, case studies that focus on um, compassionate communication and how to deal with conflict and um, how to feel and express your emotions and what does it mean when things on the outside aren't what you think you're asking for and what you're wanting and we talk about universal laws all of it it's really it's just juicy and delicious <laughs> <laughs> So what Better sort of, than a big <laughs> <laughs> definitely. So what sort of age are the students that you're dealing with? That you're the teaching? University of California students are between freshmen, so 18 first year students, and up to graduate students. So I've had women in, and men in my classes who are in the either master's or PhD programs, and they could be 30, 40 or high or older. Yeah. I you know, it's just so interesting. So much has changed in a short period with, with social media and all the pressures that are on younger people. Uh, you know, my son's 30 now and his life is so different to what mine was at 30. 
And I think this, what you're teaching are, are really skills that we need in, in this time. Is that the sort of feedback that you're getting? Yes. Um, it's called co-curricular education. So it's, I teach under the auspices of the student affairs division. And the whole focus of student affairs is to augment these very intellectual, well, <clears throat> excuse me, intellectual and at UCI, very research focused, excuse me, research focused um, degree programs, like if you want to be an engineer or pre-med or an accountant. And what I teach is about how do you deal with these things that come up as a part of what you're doing in your degree, but can span beyond college into your life. And so what I hear from the students, I got, I've gotten rave reviews from the students. We have some really beautiful testimonials from them. And we also um, even hear from faculty members, like when do we get a version of your <laughs> class? And we're looking at, of course, how do we scale it now? So yeah. how do we reach more students with it outside of just the UCI system, but in the, the whole University of California system. And then, of course, I say world domination. Which, <laughs> um, you know, people say world domination. That doesn't sound too nice. And I say, well, I'm teaching peace, love, joy, and freedom. I think the world dominated by those energies would be really awesome. <laughs> yeah, yeah I, I laugh about world domination as well. And my, my husband thinks it's very funny. So, <laughs> this is Pat Duckworth talking to Valerie Shepherd and talking about world domination, yes, but with yes. peace and love. So it's all good. So you just really briefly touched on your purpose in life there. And how would you phrase that now? What is your purpose in life? I am um, Shepherd seekers to inner clarity, peace, love, and joy. Well, that, I can't argue with any of that. And Basically, I see myself as a messenger. So the truths that I'm telling are not necessarily, you know, it's not that I invented them. It's that I'm merging these universal spiritual truths and practices with dynamics that have happened in my life in order to bring them to life and allow people to connect to them at a deeper level and, and then implement them in their lives and then create a ripple effect that touches more and more and more and more. Lovely. And, and how long have you known that that was your purpose? Hmm. I guess we're probably a, a cl approaching a decade now. Yeah. Really feeling like, um, and I would say this, at a soul level, I've known my entire life. Um, whether I've been willing to align with that soul level calling has been the question. And mm -hmm. I'd say the alignment with that soul level calling has been the last 10 years of being willing to be seen as that, be put myself out there and I'm, I'm being more bold than I ever have been before. And it's, so it's a, it's an unfolding and a spiraling up in my consciousness as I do more and more of what it is I came here to do. And, and what was it that allowed you to bring that to the surface? Was there something that triggered it or was it just work you were doing on yourself? You know, it's a, I see it as a perfect storm of a couple of things. So there were two fairly large events in my physiological being that made me ask some questions. So many years ago when I first got started doing this, I was having symptoms of a heart attack and I was told there's nothing wrong with your heart. We can see that something's going on with it, but there's no physiological cause. So that was the first time that I went, okay, I didn't even know that I could have physiological effects mm -hmm. where there was no physiological cause. So that took me deeper in the spirituality and metaphysics and all of that stuff. Um, then the most recent time was 2015 when a blood vessel burst in my brain and um, that caused this catastrophic hemorrhagic stroke. And I really went deeper into, okay, the first part of this journey was understanding who I really am or what I really am as a spiritual human integrated being. And the second part is going deeper into that, going deeper into self-compassion and self-love and going deeper into alignment with the divine and um, 
going deeper into using my whole instrument. And even if that means a body that doesn't work the way it used to, be able to use that as a way to connect with people and, and to teach what I'm here to teach. Yeah. So have you got any advice for women who feel that they've got a purpose, they just haven't uncovered what it is? How, how are they going to dig it out? You know, it's, it's not always as difficult as it seems, and it's not always as easy as other people tell us either. So it's, it's each one reaches it on their, with their own special sauce and their own special path. I will tell you this, there are a couple of things. One of the things that really is important and has continues to be important for me is to have uh, the wisdom of a person who's done it or a coach or a trainer. Or I have a, a spiritual advisor who I is my touchstone and I go and um, spend time with him every week and focus on what's unfolding for me and why is it unfolding and how is it helping me contribute to what I'm doing. And then um, the other part, the other thing I would say is that uh, there's time in the silence. Like mm -hmm. uh, life can take on so many have tos, want tos, must haves, things that we, that keep us going, doing, and really um, active. And like, pulling back from that, like coming in and getting into the inner sanctum and being willing to separate myself from the everything going on in the world and just listen um, and listen with an ears not necessary listening that is allowing me to hear the messages that come in very subtle tones um, may, they may not even come in words pictures they may come in feelings um, those kinds of things have really been critical to me um, knowing my path and then staying on it that that's beautiful and I, I'm so hoping that soon I'll be able to be on one of the deep dive retreats with you and yeah. to be in that energy uh, it'd just be fantastic so Valerie anybody watching if they want to find out more about your book or about you or your website give us some links yes my book living happy to be me and the subtitle is dancing your soul light style it's all about adopting these practices for the rest of your life and the uh the link for the book is happy to be and okay. there are videos there you can purchase the book there at a 25 percent discount versus the amazon price and there are lots of tools and tips there and you can also connect with me you can see the um, testimonials that readers have left and also what people have said about hiring me as a, a keynote speaker or workshops. And the latest thing that I've been doing, which is fun, is a master class. And um, people are actually bringing me to their homes, inviting a bunch of their friends, <laughs> and we're doing a master class um, based on the book that way. So there are lots of ways to engage with me. And I look forward to everyone. That's great. Oh, now I nearly forgot to ask my question, which is, is it's my new question because it's something that I'm working on at the moment. Okay. How would you define success for you in your business now? Mm. Okay, so success for me uh, in my business now unfolds on a moment by moment basis and includes uh, three things. Number one is that I feel completely connected to the divine and I'm on purpose. So that's the most important. I always look back to that. Number two, there has to be a lot of smiling and a lot of laughter. Because I know that laughter heals and it's an ener a vibration raising energy and I love immersing myself in that. So when that's happening, I feel I'm being successful. And number three is that Whenever I'm giving to the planet, whatever I'm doing to serve others, I'm also serving myself at the same time. That is, that selfless service is great, and I believe that you have to serve from a full cup. And so I try to make sure, not I don't, I don't try, I make sure that I'm doing everything I need to do to keep myself healthy and vibrant, connected, all of that. I love that definition. I, I've been working on my own definition of what success means. And 
at the very highest level, it's whatever makes me smile. And then I just have to go from there. So we're on the same page. <laughs> it's a really important question, Pat, and especially for women, because yes. we can very quickly be all about taking care of everything else out there. And we're the lowest thing on our list. And to actually come up with our own definition, like one of the things that I work with my students on is a lot of the things they're doing and being are other people's ideas for them. And they haven't really gotten clear on what they want and what they don't want. And so they're, they're just living these other ideas. And the problem with that is we can actually go 20 or 30 or 40 or 50 years or a lifetime living mm -hmm. other people's ideas for us and never really taking ownership of it and asking ourselves, is this mine? Like, the, is this thought mine? Is this idea about myself or my limitations mm -hmm. that come from me? And so I think it's really beautiful to be able to ask, what is my definition of success now? And how am I creating that for myself? Yeah, I think it's such an important question and I'm really enjoying dancing around with it and finding out what other people are thinking about it because it's so easy to live by other people's definitions of success. And so often you get challenged with, with numbers, you know, how much, how many, you know, how long and, and you know, to be able to say, that I'm not interested in those measures. They're not where I am with this. Uh, so, yeah. You'll hear me asking that a lot more, I think. Thank you so much, Valerie. This has just been such a joy. I'm so grateful to speak to you. Thank and you. yeah, and hopefully I will be seeing you soon. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> and to all of our viewers, thank you very much for watching and keep watching out for more of these interviews with amazing entrepreneurs and everything that we can learn from them. See you again soon.